Why the U.S. is experiencing a widespread worker shortage It's official the U.S. economy doesn't have enough workers, eh? For nearly a year now, the each month has been higher than the number of people looking for work You the first time that's happened since the Department of Labor began tracking job turnover two decades ago At the end of January, the U.S. economy had 7.6 million unfilled jobs but only 6.5 million people were looking for work, Friday by the U.S. Department of Labor. This was the 11th, just look at the chart below. For two decades, employers have been complaining about a shortage of skilled workers in recent years, particularly workers with advanced degrees in STEM fields. Nearly ever in this, the hardest to find workers are no longer computer engineers. They are home health care. This means that you for once you low-skilled workers have the most leverage in the current labor market. There's no better time for working-class Americans to demand better wages, benefits, schedules, and work conditions. It also means that related video companies retain older workers in light of tight labor market provided by USA Today. The numbers are pretty clear about what comes next. If 7.6 right now there are 1.4 million people who are considered marginally attached to the US labor force and who are not counted as job seekers. They are people who economists agree that employers need to do more to entice workers to join the labor market. They need to sweeten the companies looking to attract enough blue collar workers will have to continue increasing wages and, as a result, possibly experience diminished profits, wrote Gad Levanon, chief economist for North America at the Conference Board, a global economic research organization that the recent U.S. labor shortage. Slow income growth has been the most persistent problem affecting the U.S. economy in its recovery from the Great Recession. Wages have with the that's starting to change as businesses need to compete harder than ever to keep and attract workers. In fact, the private sector workers excluding farm workers got an average 11 cent hourly raise in February, adding up to an average of $27.66 per hour. That has happened only, but even an 11 cent increase is on the low side when you consider how well the economy is performing. When you take inflate, until we see wages growth really pick up, I am going to believe that there are still more Americans out there, Minnesota Federal Reserve Bank President Neil Cash carry to state senators. I am very, but raising wages will only do so much to ease the labor shortage. Businesses will need, the new labor market data shows a lot of unfilled jobs that require college degrees, you about 1 million in the professional business service sector. That includes law, these are the kinds of jobs that low-skilled immigrants, often from Latin America, have long helped to fill. But Trump's restrict back, the Wall Street Journal's editorial board warned Trump that his restrictions on immigration could hurt the economy. If President Trump wants employers to produce and build more in America, the US will need to improve education and skills in manufacturing and IT. But the economy will, Daryl West, a Brookings expert on technology and public policy back in 2013 that the U.S. economy would suffer if Congress didn't overhaul the immigration system. America's immigration system is not designed for today's economy, and remains largely unchanged since 1965. In fact, providing more work visas for skilled and unskilled immigrants seems like an obvious solution to ease the labor shortage. But it's also the solution.